These simple 3D printed parts fit together to make a solid object known as an oloid. I'm going to show you how I made it and all these other oloids. Hi, I'm Andy Wardley. Welcome back to Make It Down to Earth. This video is all about oloids. Oloids are closely related to the sphericons that we looked at in the last video. And like sphericons, it's probably easier to demonstrate what they are rather than trying to explain it in words. An oloid is formed from two circles of the same size that are connected together at right angles so that the center of one circle is on the perimeter of the other. Now this is just a basic bare bones oloid and that's all you need to make something that rolls. And like sphericons, they roll in a wibbly wobbly way. These disc oloids, as I've been calling them, are really easy to design and print and you can have a lot of fun coming up with your own patterns. I'll show you how I created my designs, including this Halloween oloid. For this, I created the outline separately in Illustrator, saved it as an SVG and then imported that into a Fusion 360 sketch. I'll show you how I did it. The next step is to add a skin to our oloid. So we turn something like this into something like this. Now, this turned out to be quite a bit harder than I originally anticipated, but I tracked down the equations for an oloid and I used those to write a computer program that would generate a mathematically correct model of an oloid and save it as an STL file. Once I had it as an STL file, I could then import it into Fusion 360, and that actually turned out to be a bit harder than I thought as well. But then in Fusion 360, I could slice it up into parts to make it easier to print. And then I could start doing other things to come up with my own custom designs. I'll show you the techniques that I use to create all these other oloids here. All of my designs are open source, there's a link in the description below to a GitHub repository where you can find the STL files for all these oloids so that you can print them out yourself. And there are also the Fusion 360 source files so that you can work through the examples in the video or use them as the basis for your own designs. But before we get into too much technical detail, let's take a closer look at what I've made. <laughs>
So we've seen that we can make a simple oloid from just two circles, but can we make it any simpler? Well, in fact we can, because the centre section of these circles doesn't contact the surface that it's rolling on. In fact, all we need is two thirds of a circle. Each of these is 240 degrees, and the section that's been removed is the remaining 120. And when fitted together, they create everything you need to make an oloid roll. So let's create a simple disc oloid in Fusion 360. I'm going to start by creating some user parameters. The first will be the length of my oloid, which I'm going to use 150 millimeters. Then we will have the radius of the circle, which will be exactly one third of the length. And let's add in the diameter just for ease of use, that's radius times two. We also need the thickness of our disc, five millimeters should do it. And the final one we need is the clearance, which I'm going to use 0.25 millimeters. Then we create a sketch on the XY plane and draw a circle and we'll enter the length for the diameter and then we'll draw another circle from the origin and use the radius as the diameter. I'm going to set those both to be construction circles. And then I can draw a circle from here. This will have the radius of the diameter. You can see it touches onto this point here or we can just make sure we're lined up with the origin and drag across to there for the other circle. So let's make both of those. In fact, we'll keep this one as a circle because the next thing we need to do is draw our connecting line. So I'm going to draw that there. That can be a construction line. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle that's just large enough to cover the end of that. This needs to be the thickness of the disc. And then we'll use the midpoint to set the midpoint of this to be on there to move it into place. Now that's a perfect slot, but we need to add some clearance just to make things fit smoothly. So I'll add that in there. Then I can change that in a square to be a construction line and I'll trim off some of these other lines here that are no longer required. Oh, not that one. That one there and that one. That one too. So that then gives us the basic disc and we can extrude that. I'm going to go up by the thickness divided by two and then go symmetric so that it's centered on the origin. And the reason why I like to center it on the origin is that then I can mirror it and then move, rotate around the x-axis, yes. 90 degrees and we can see what it will look like. So let's just put some adherence on there. Let's go for red and green. And that's the simple disc oloid. Now we can easily turn that into a ring just by creating an offset coming inwards of let's say, well let's go for the same thickness, five millimeters. And then we replay the extrude, unselect that center section, and now we've got ring oloids. So we can also 
look at creating a minimal alloy. So I'm going to draw a line down here. That can be a construction line. I'm going to offset that by again the thickness divided by two. Mirror that around this line, and then use the circular pattern tool to replicate those three lines around the center circle three times, perfect. So now we've got, this is the 240 degrees we need. We just need to uh, extend this down here a bit. So I'm going to mirror this line around there and then draw another rectangle Let's go from there to there, lock that on and just drop that down past there. Now, hopefully what we can do is go back to our extrude and uh, press the wrong key coming into that one. So we control and we don't need that. And there we go. So as long as we have the outer 240 degrees of the circle and some way to connect them in the middle, it doesn't really matter what else we put inside the circle. So you can come up with your own interesting designs and patterns. I've got a few here. This one I call the brain box because it looks a bit like a brain. And this one here is quite similar, the honeycomb. Both of these were created using the same basic technique in Fusion 360. I just started with my circle, added in some extra lines, gave them some width using the offset tool, and then extruded them to make my two discs. This is the brain box design. If I turn the body off, you can see the sketch I'm using here. This is just extruded upwards, and then I use the chamfer tool just to uh, chamfer the edges there. The um, this sketch was created if I show you the basic template I used. So I had an outer circle, used the offset tool to create the inner circle, drew a hexagon, offset tool to create this one here, and then some radial lines going out from the middle. And the connector here, I used the hexagon. Again, that same cutout slot there. So the brain box, you can see the other lines that I kept. I just copied the sketch and then deleted the lines I didn't want and rounded off some of the corners using the fillet tool. The other design here is the honeycomb. That started with a slightly different initial template, six hexagons in a circular pattern around the center hexagon. And again, I just selectively deleted some lines and then extruded that to create this one. Again, I've chamfered the edges here a bit more abruptly to give a slightly sharper look. The design for the Halloween Oloid was a little bit more complicated and I didn't fancy drawing this out in a Fusion 360 sketch. So instead, I created this design in Illustrator and saved it as an SVG file. Then I could import the SVG into a Fusion 360 sketch and use the outline to extrude my discs in the normal way. My own journey of Oloid Enlightenment began a few months ago, about the same time that I found out about Sphericons from Angus over at Maker's Muse. I was reading the Wikipedia page on Sphericons and noticed at the bottom a reference to the Oloid. I looked at the Wikipedia page and thought it looked interesting and thought it would be quite easy to model it in Fusion 360. So I had a go and I failed. 
and then I tried a different approach and that failed as well and then I tried a third approach and that also failed. Now I did get quite close but it just wasn't close enough and at this point I was mildly annoyed so I just kind of um, gave up and went back to Spherikons for a bit. Then a week or two later Angus posted a follow-up video including his 3D printed Oloids and I thought great this is going to be my chance to find out from an expert how to design an Oloid in Fusion 360. Now as it turns out Angus also had some problems. Now he did actually come up with a good workaround using the lofting tool and for most 3D printing purposes I'm sure it'd be fine. But this did puzzle me because I wasn't at all surprised that I hadn't been able to do with it. I'm still relatively new to 3D printing and still finding my way around Fusion 360 so I just assumed my problem was somewhere between the keyboard and the chair. But Angus, you know, he's a pro, and if he couldn't do it, that suggested to me there was something more to this than met the eye. So by this point it had become a, a personal challenge for me. I wanted to understand oloids and how to model them. So I decided to do some research. Unfortunately, I didn't have to search very far, because at the bottom of the Wikipedia page for oloids, there is a link to a PDF of a paper from the Journal for Geometry and Graphics, Volume 1, 1997, Number 2, pages 105 to 118. And in that paper, it's two Austrian authors whose names I won't attempt to pronounce. They provide the parametric equations for the surface of an oloid. Now, these equations look pretty gnarly at first glance, or at least they did to me, but actually they're not really that hard to understand. So let's take a closer look. Here are the two circles that make up an oloid. And here are the two equations from the paper that we're interested in. A refers to the circle on the left, here in red, and B refers to the circle on the right, in green. The origin is here in the middle, the x-axis goes from left to right, the y-axis from front to back, and the z or z axis up and down. The radius of each circle is one, so the distance here from the center to the outside is one, and the origin lies in the middle. So we know the distance here is a half, putting the center of the green circle at plus a half in the y direction, and the center of the red circle at minus a half. The three components of the equations for A and B correspond to the X, Y and Z coordinates for points on their corresponding circles. These depend on the sine and cosine of an angle T, short for theta, which is the Greek letter that mathematicians like to use for angles. So here if we consider the zero position, the line that this point here makes with its centre is at zero degrees to the Y axis. And as I grab my slider, I can send that on a little journey going round the circle. In fact, it goes round 120 degrees, which is what we need to trace out one quarter of the oloid. Now, if you watch the green point, that also traces around the circle, but it starts off very slowly and then accelerates towards the end. Now, all we have to do is imagine a line between these two points and this will trace out the surface of the oloid. Now you'll notice that the red ball moves slowly in even steps around the circle, but the green one starts off slowly and then accelerates towards the end. This leads to an uneven oloid where we have a very fine definition around on this part, but very coarse definition here. So instead I adapted the algorithm and only computed points for the first 90 degrees. So you'll see we have the red ball comes around 90 degrees here and the green ball only moves 30 degrees. So what we're then missing are the remaining points around here and the remaining points around here but in fact we've already calculated those because we've got the points from here that we can just copy on over here. We have to do some transformation, changing the x-axis to the z-axis and flip the sign of the y-axis, but that's fairly simple. And the same here, the points that we've just calculated can be transformed to give us the remaining points down here. And the end result is a perfectly smooth and symmetrical oloid. We only need to calculate one quarter of the oloid because we can then just mirror it across the y-axis for the other side 
and then both those halves across the z-axis to form the bottom half. This is the program that I wrote to calculate all those coordinates and then generate an STL file. I won't go through it in detail, all the source code is in the GitHub repository if you want to look at it or run it yourself. And there, we run the file from the command line, it prompts us for the radius, I'm just going to accept the defaults, number of samples, defaults, and it's written out my Oloid file as an STL. Okay, so let's now insert the STL file into a Fusion 360 document. Now, what we have here is a mesh. So this is really just the outer skin of the oloid and it's not a solid object. What we want to do is convert it into a solid so that we can split it up into parts and manipulate it to make all sorts of interesting designs. Now, the trick here is we've got to first turn off the design history. So we right click on the document settings, do not capture design history. Then we can right click on the body and select mesh to BREP. That will then convert the mesh into a body and then we go back and we turn our design history back on. So now we've got a solid body. I like to print mine in parts. So the first thing I'll normally do is rotate this around the x-axis, 90 degrees, and then split it across the xy plane. And that's my top half. So I can then save that as an STL and send it off to the printer, print it twice, and then glue it together. Let's now look at some of the things we can do to this oloid. I'm going to start off by creating a sketch on the XY plane to use as a guide. Now I know that this has a total length of 100 millimeters. So I'm going to draw a guide circle there. Let's just check. And I'm going to draw my second circle, which is a third of that. And that can also be a construction circle. And then my main circle will go from here up to there. And we can just check that corresponds to this part of the body. So then let's look at the first technique, which I call a cookie cutter. So I'm just going to create something like a hexagon here. Use the circular pattern tool to replicate that. I'm going to go for six times, but turn some of these off. So I've just got those three there. Okay, I can turn that to be a construction line. And then if I take my oloid, I can use the extrude tool just to extrude these all the way up. Let's go symmetric and cut those out. So that's the basic cookie cutter technique. Now, I was wondering if these cog teeth would stop the oloid from rolling, whether this would kind of catch up here, but it doesn't at all, because the supporting surface underneath ensures that it always makes smooth contact with the table. So then I started wondering, well, how much can I chop off? Can I chop off this much? Does it still roll? chop off this much. Does it still roll? Yep. With this one, I chopped the end off completely, so we've got a square end. Does that roll? Yep. For the more complicated designs, I took a slightly different approach. So here I would start off with something like the disc and extrude it up, symmetric, do the same thing with the disc here, again go 10 millimeters, symmetric, join it onto that one 
and then I'll take the intersection of this using the combine tool with the oloid. New component, keep the tools and that's what we end up with. Here's another one uh, to using a basic cog profile. So let's go out 15mm this time. Turn the bodies on. Okay, I'll do the same for that one. 15, two sides, join on. And then we can create the intersection of that with your life. interlocking cogs olive. I used the same basic technique to design the fern oloids. So here I started with a sketch that looked uh, I guess like fan blades and then I used the sweep tool going along which got two paths here. I set a twist angle And then if I enable my oloid and use the combine tool, I can intersect it with those twisted blades. I will have to wait a while because this will require some fairly heavy computation. And there we have it. And then the final thing I have to show you is my multi-colour oloid. This is printed in parts that simply snap together with friction. No glue, no magnets, no pegs. Each part is really super simple to print. There's no overhangs, nothing tricky. And you can just pop it together and make your own really cool oloid. I've got another video in the works which is going to be all about my multicolored printing efforts including oloids, spherecons and all sorts of other interesting things. So that's it for this video, I hope you've enjoyed learning about oloids as much as I have. In the next video we'll be looking at the thing that is stopping all these oloids from rolling off the table in a wibbly wobbly way. Little bases I made for them. I hope you'll join me for that, I'm Andy Wardley, you've been watching Make It Down To Earth.